Hey everyone, it's Ivan from Kipadger.com here to bring you part one in a two-part series talking about suicide. I've actually been kicking around the idea for this video for quite a while now and recently talking with one of my mentors, one of my best friends, I finally decided to do it and the reason it's broken into two parts is with respect to suicide, I don't know, I feel there's basically two different separate sides of it and one being suicide with youth and the other one being suicide from PTSD, specifically to military as well as law enforcement. And because of personal experiences and stuff, both of those facets have absolutely touched me in different ways. So at first, I'm gonna kind of speak to the idea of suicide with youth. One of the reasons I want to speak to suicide with youth is because, honestly, it's not a conversation that happens, I don't think. And when the conversation happens, I don't think there's actionable things that actually come from that. So at the end of this, hopefully, there'll be something actionable for people rather than like, oh, like, look for these signs and whatever bullshit that basically gets spouted. So, to lay groundwork, I guess, if you're 10 years old, or if you're old enough to have teenagers, but so old that you forgot, being a teenager is fucking hard. Really hard. On a bunch of different levels. Like, your body's going through all this stuff, peer pressure, all kinds of bullshit. It's hard. Absolutely. And a lot of people don't know how to cope with it, and a lot of people get to a point where suicide looks like a viable option. Speaking from personal experience, when I was 12, I believe, having been raised by a single mother more or less up to then, limited interaction with my father, my mom ended up getting married when I was 12. So like coming right into it. Incredibly difficult with biologically everything that was going on. The whole world got turned upside down. And I had a rough time with it so rough of a time fortunately some people around me saw what was ultimately a cry for help i ended up carving in our dining room table lee's an asshole and ain't worth shit for a father pretty fucked up but that's the space i was in and when someone gets in a place like that gets in a really dark place like how do they get out of that like they see one route out because it's a myopic view like this is my world forever 13 years old like or maybe 14 at the time but it wasn't like oh you know what like this will pass like no like this state that i was in was going to last perpetually forever you get stuck in that so where do you go from there tell you what i didn't do didn't call a helpline Nothing like that. And honestly, I think it's wonderful. And if it helps one person, keep doing it. But I kind of think it's bullshit. Honestly, I think helplines and stuff like that are for basically people that just kind of want to be coddled. But I think people that are actually like well down that dark path, I don't think it's valid. What it really came down to for me is having that one person in my life that gave a shit about me. That was it. But more than that, like that person has to one, give a shit about you. But granted, there were a bunch of people in my life that actually cared about me. But you know what? There was this one person in my life that I actually mutually respected and cared about. And that ultimately makes all the difference in the world. My friend, mentor, one of my best friends to this day was in my wedding and he'd actually been down that road himself. Different case, more long lines of PTSD, which we'll speak to in part two of this whole thing. But he was there and he made it known to me that he actually gave a shit about me. And because I was in a position that I valued him and his opinion, like he was someone I looked up to and respected, that actually made all the difference in the world. He also, sample size of one, but requested a promise from me. 
What was his promise? Well, again, 13, 14 years old. He said, you know what? At least don't kill yourself until you feel your first bare breast. It worked. Well, it is absolutely funny. It's absolutely true. And I'm here today because of this person in my life. And to basically, to basically illustrate how big of an issue this is, we're going to go to like media hysteria, hype, all that stuff, just briefly. So in the last like 10 years, according to the CDC, we've had 288 deaths from school shootings. Admittedly, 288 too many. Ultimately though, those were perpetrated by people who wanted to commit suicide. Too cowardly to do it themselves, not that I think anyone should do it, but chose to bring other people with them in the hopes of suicide by cop at the end of it. I think maybe one or two of those people lost nerve, dropped their weapon, and actually got taken alive. But at the heart of it, those were perpetrated by people in such a dark place that they were looking for that easy way out. In that same period of time, last 10 years, there was an excess of 57,000 students that killed themselves. When I say students, I mean like zero to 24. For whatever reason, that's the age bracket that was given. But in 10 years, 57,000 students taken their lives and 288 people total have been killed in school shootings. Like wherein lies the problem? In addition to that, again, all those school shootings were perpetrated ultimately by suicidal people. I'm not at all condoning their actions, regardless of how dark a place they were in, but I'm saying those are the people that were doing that. Now, I'm not trying to turn this into, hey, like gun debate, blah, blah, like no. If we actually care about students and children's lives, like this is something that actually needs to be addressed because 57,000 over 10 years, that's significant. And going back to the idea of something actionable, like how, how can ultimately, how can people help with ultimately teenagers that are in a dark place in their life? Like that's the question, right? So what can be actionable? I think ultimately having that two-way respect going, someone that really respects and admires this person and conversely back the other way and letting that person know that you really love and care about them. Now granted, there's a lot of families and everything like that that, oh, I let them know I love and care. You know what, if that mutual respect isn't there, it falls on deaf ears. And if you're constantly telling someone they're special, eventually they realize they're not and it's even more hurtful. So if you're gonna to talk to your kids about how special they are, or anyone for that matter, make it genuine. Like, why are they special? Are they special because they got a participation trophy? No, they're special because of really amazing, unique attributes. And those are what you wanna actually impress on people. Those actually build self-esteem and help move people out of dark times. It does. And if you do recognize someone going through a hard time, Create, come, create some sort of uh, stress, some sort of promise that has basically a timeline with it. Time to give people to basically remove themselves from the situation and realize that ultimately dark times are gonna end up passing. Again, sample size of one. Will this work for everyone? I have no idea. But if it works for one person, that right there is success. Big takeaway from all of this, boobs save lives. But in all honesty, next in part two, basically talk about PTSD, how it relates to suicide with respect to military and law enforcement. And yeah, rough subjects. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.